Thank you. The British Army is delivering fuel to gas stations this week as truck driver shortages grow, a situation our own trucking industry is watching very, very closely. Trucking HR Canada says there is a shortage of nearly 20,000 drivers. Think about that. 20,000 drivers in the country needs to hire at least 17,000 new drivers every year until 2025 to keep up with the demand. For more, we are joined by Stephen Laskowski, president of the Canadian Trucking Alliance. Good morning to you. Nice to have you on the show. Thanks to have me on the show. Let's talk about how the pandemic has exacerbated this problem. Sure. So prior to the pandemic, we were short about 30 to 40,000 uh, truck drivers for 2023 based on a Conference Board of Canada study. We also had the issue of having the largest percentage of individuals over the age of 55 working for a sector. What's happened during COVID is we already had that shortage. Now what a lot of individuals have done, they've chosen to retire. So now we're for, faced with exactly what you just mentioned. Trucking HR Canada mentioned that earlier this year, we were faced with 20,000 vacancies in our, in our industry yeah. for the truck driving occupation. I mean, that's a huge number. I also understand there's a severe equipment shortage. How could this affect the country's supply chain? So, you know, we're hit on both ends. Uh, you know, the, the obvious one is, uh, you know, with trucks, it's an eight to 12 month delivery date, perhaps longer. And we can all understand why if you don't have trucks, what you can't do. What perhaps others don't understand is the importance of trailers. Trailers act as mobile warehouses. In a lot of circumstances, they're preloaded. So when the drivers arrive, they're not waiting, so they could take the trailer and leave. So we're not just faced with a driver shortage, we're faced with a significant equipment shortage, which is laid, leading to a fragile supply chain. And Stephen, obviously we've been watching what's going on in the UK right now with the shortages there. I'm sure you're watching that very closely. How worried are you about a similar situation um, to that happening here? You know, we're blessed in this country with the great the great logistic managers in our industry. The last two years have been a significant challenge. We'd work through it with our workforce, with our customers, and with help from both the federal and provincial governments. So we're getting through there. I think one of the issues that we all have to be cognizant of, and for your listeners here who are CEOs of presidents within the supply chain, is to understand that what is happening in our sector is truck drivers, in order to keep them, uh, what we are doing and what some companies are doing is listening to their drivers. If drivers do not want to go to a certain customer, they're delisting them or, or not sending them. And what that means is why they're doing that. If the driver is treated poorly there, not access to washrooms, or perhaps not loaded and unloaded in a timely manner, uh, the, the companies will not send the drivers because the drivers don't want to go. So the message here is that we're managing the supply chain but those who within the supply chain who are not treating drivers properly may see more challenges versus others who treat the drivers properly. So you've highlighted some of the issues. So let's look forward and see, okay, what can be done about this? We need, what, 17,000 new drivers per year to the year 2025 to make sure that the supply chain is not interrupted. How do you get a driver, how do you attract somebody to this profession? So uh, this, in, later on in this month, we'll be releasing a national campaign to recruit individuals to our sector. Uh, companies themselves are introducing flexible schedules, uh, trying to put forward uh, the most competitive compensation packages. There's, I just mentioned previously the role of our customers of treating drivers properly so they will be attracted to our sector. The last role comes in the form of government with regards to uh, increasing Training, uh, training allowances to our sector. We, compared to other sectors, we do not receive as much money for training. Secondarily, uh, access to immigration and foreign labor. Uh, Canada has declining birth rates. Uh, what, what we want to see in both of those sectors is money and labor going to known or trusted employers, employers that meet the highest standards of safety and labor compliance. Because the last point, uh, Lindsay, that is critically important to understand what's happened during COVID and during this labor crisis is the underground economy in our industry is incentivizing truck drivers from good, safe, compliant companies to come work for them. And it's becoming a significant problem from coast to coast. And what we need is the federal government, the provincial governments to step up enforcement in the underground economy and trucking before we, before good, 
hardworking, compliant trucking companies lose more drivers to this underground economy referred to in our industry as the driver ink economy. Well, Stephen, thanks for coming on this morning to highlight this very important issue that impacts all Canadians. Stephen, thanks. Thank you very much. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.